Hey friends, welcome to McFarland's Corner. I'm Michael McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide. I'm going to give you a Lake Fork rundown for August 22nd, 2020. Awesome morning this morning. Father and son expedition, which are my favorite. Something always crazy happens when I have father and son. And in the past, I've even had mother and daughter or father and daughter. But whatever it is, is, is father and, and sibling. Um, magical things happen. It could be just an eagle dives and catches a fish and we get to witness it firsthand. But most of the time, it's a big fish that comes aboard the boat. And today, it was two of them. Um, Dad today brings home two giant Lake Fork beautiful beasts. Um, one caught on the Santone football jig and the other caught on something new that we're going to tell you about. It's not a new bait, but it's, it's a new. We haven't been fishing with it for a little while. So before we get into that, Here's the rundown for Saturday, August 22nd. Water temperatures, crack of dawn, main lake, subsurface, the first 18 inches, okay? Main body, mid lake, 84 degrees, even down south by the dam, 84 degrees. When I came off the water about 11 a.m., it was 84.6, way cool for August, all right? Um, man, that should be 88, 89. In the morning, on launch, 87, 88. So we're much cooler. Um, Fish are still scattered, fish are still shallow and deep. A little bit of both. Visibility, one foot visibility in most of the main lake and south. You start getting up in the arms, the more north you go, the more brown the water does turn. You'll start to see some of the methane and gas bubbles that are rising when the cool nights cool the surface, cooler water gets heavy, that heavy water sinks through the water column breaks any thermocline and allows all that dead debris to rise from the bottom. It floats on top. It's methane gases mostly, but it's it's death. It's, it's decay from the bottom, okay? That's why it messes up our boats. It's the only time of year we gotta wipe our boats down. Go up in there and in, in the northern ends and you start to lose the visibility and the water starts to turn brown. Still can catch fish in it. They are okay. No oxygen issues at this time. Lake level, 401.51. That's one and a half foot below full pool. Another really rarity for this time of year. Um, we can be as much as two or three feet below pool. We're not dropping very fast. Um, from one day yesterday, 401.54, to today, 401.51, it's not that much. Um, that's only about you know two or three inches in the course of 24 hours. It's a little faster. Uh, I'm sorry, not two or three inches. Um, not even two thirds of an inch, not even two thirds of an inch in 24 hours. So amazing. Um, normally we have a half an inch daily of evaporation. Most of the time, Lake Fork experiences about a one inch per day drop, half an inch evaporation, a quarter inch rate of flow, which is what they release downstream, and another quarter inch of municipal source use for Alba, Gantis, etc., the local counties and towns around the lake. So really, man, the lake is in an awesome, awesome shape, better than it's been in a long time, all right? Don't, for a second, buy in to that it's dead, Lake Forks, days are over. It's not ever gonna be the 90s again, because it's just not the 90s anymore. We don't have a lake full of grass, but it's a new evolution. Okay, the fish live in this lake and act different than they used to in the 90s, but they're still there. They live in the trees, they live offshore, and they visit feeding grounds. Instead of living right amongst the grass, which is everything, the grass offers a home, food, oxygen, everything they need, all in one place. They are forced now to do what I call bedrooms and kitchens. The bedrooms are the wood, the trees, where they can go live, like in your fish tank. The fish go somewhere to hide out in the rocks and in the stuff. So they hide and live amongst the trees. Sometimes they can feed in those trees. The food is with them, around them, or gets blown into them. But more often than not, they have to leave those trees and go to somewhere a feeding grounds, feeding flats, feeding tables, and in this case, shell beds. The shell beds are like reefs in the ocean. They're visited daily. They're visited sometimes multiple times in a day by all predators. 
catfish, bass, white bass, they all find these shell bedded reefs, these hard bottom areas, beneficial to them for food. Okay, so bedrooms and kitchens, and that is a great theory. It's a bass fisherman's theory. Live in one place, feed in another. Understand that movement, understand this, and you're fishing for them in the proper places at the proper times. Now let's get to what we were doing. We started fishing the shell beds. We started fishing the feeding grounds. Call them a deer feeder, if you will, okay? When the fish come to a shell bed, they come there to eat. They're usually easier to catch and they bite pretty doggone good. They eat the bait, swim away with it, suck it in deep, okay? Football jig today was the deal. No fish today were caught. I'm sorry, I caught one fish today on the sand tone, stand up, shaky head with the magnum trick worm, but it was the football jig. The three quarter arrow Santone football jig, JC Spicy Craw, with the green pumpkin lobster trail. Okay, that trailer right there is a four inch trailer, whereas the regular is a smaller trailer. All right, I love that four inch trailer because it makes a great big profile. I'm not gonna tell you that big baits always catch big fish because I eat two pounders that eat that too. Um, but that bigger profile tends to catch the bigger bite. Okay, and it certainly did today all right the other bait is when they are in the trees the bedroom if you will and by the way i want to show you that it's called rage craw striking rage craw lobster rage craw rage craw lobster okay i use them both the next deal is when those fish get in those trees they're suspending in the trees sometimes they just literally lay on the limbs they belly rest on the limbs of the trees it's their home it's the bedroom they can be caught typically i like to go to a texas rig something weedless because i'm going to throw past the tree over the top of the tree and i'm going to bring the bait through the tree itself now i'm talking about deep submerged trees okay the average depth of these shell beds that we're catching them in is about 14 to 18. The average depth of these trees can be out in 30 or 40 or 50 feet of water. Talking about a big full oak tree that comes up to 20 feet. It's in 50 feet, but the tree's 30 foot tall. Okay, so now the tops of these trees is 20 feet deep. All right, and the fish are living in the tops of those trees. A Texas rig goes through those trees real easy. Okay, it goes through with less hang up and less issue. And so what I did is today, instead of the worms, we've been throwing worms kind of like the the oh the strike king cutter worm um or again the shaky head the magnum trick worm um when i go to uh, the texas rig i'll even use the ribbon tails like the power worm etc well the, today the fish were kind of subtle and so i went to very simple <laughs> being him chopstick in texas smoke and maybe that was the answer in the trees 10 to 14 feet of water believe it or not some of the fish were 14 to 8, but Texas Smoke VM Chopstick. I throw this on my signature MB 7 foot 3 1020. Okay, this is a reaction rod. It's a it's a worming rod, but it's very powerful. It's a four power. It's got a lot of tip and it handles the big fish just fine. Okay? I use 15 pounds fluorocarbon line, a quarter ounce tungsten and or lead doesn't matter. Peg it, five odd regular offset hook, okay? And remember that when you hook up one of these VNMs, look at it closely, because there's a seam line on the worm. Most of the time where that seam line is, the worm will kind of banana. I wanna make sure the hook is on the bottom side of the banana, so when it falls, it undulates more. Okay, so I want the banana part of the worm, the hook to be embedded on the underneath side of that banana side of the worm. Okay, makes for a better action, gets a bit more. Again, we're throwing that in those deep submerged trees. You got to fish it slow. Basically, my best recommendation is you actually fish it fast until you feel the contact of the wood in the trees and you slow down. All right, I tell my clients, I'm looking for a reason to stop. So keep pulling it until you feel it contact something and then slow down. Let it marinate, let it soak in that tree. VM chopstick, Texas smoke, Texas rigged in the trees. Getting it done right here on the Goat Lake. Awesome times, folks.
Sure appreciate you all watching. I appreciate the thumbs up. I very much appreciate the comments. Um, listen, I've got a lot of dates open in September. If you want to come fish September and October, hit me up. It's going to actually turn the tables here and fill up real fast. As of right now, I got a lot of openings. I have Saturday, the 29th August. Okay, that's a week from today. Next week is open. Somebody hit me up and booked that at least for a half a day. Fishing's great. We had two seven pounders in the boat this morning. How about that? So, guys, appreciate you very much. I'm Michael McFarland, the Lake Fork Guide, giving you a Lake Fork Rundown. Thanks for watching.